Welcome to the 10th lecture in Making of the Media and this is about technology and techniques and looking at John Harland who invented a new type of shorthand in 1825. I'm going to argue that that had a greater impact on the job of the journalist and the type of journalism that was produced than the invention of the telegraph or the telephone. Now, there's one version of journalism history that is all about the technology. And it might start with the printing press back in the 1500s. And then we have the electric telegraph, which began to be used for journalism about 20 years after it was invented. So in the 1840s. Um, this cartoon here shows um, the sense of wonder that Victorians had about this new invention. And this is uh, about a murderer, John Towell, who in 1845 escaped the scene of a cr the crime in uh, a very new tech way. He jumped on a train, but he was caught in an equally new tech way thanks to the electric telegraph. Uh, the police telegraphed ahead to the next station, and so there were a different set of policemen waiting for him when the train pulled in and he was arrested and this was a national sensation people couldn't believe um, that this new technology had helped to capture a criminal and then we have pigeons as a new tech as a communication as technology they were used um, by journalists probably from the 1700s. By the 1840s, there was a, a sporting news agency run by William Ruff, who had uh, teams of men with homing pigeons at race courses around the country. And when the results came in, they'd be scribbled on a bit of paper, tucked under a ring on the leg of the pigeon, and the, the pigeon would be released and would fly back to Ruff's office in Drury Lane in London. And then the news would be taken by a messenger who ran through the streets to the newspaper offices. Pigeons were used by journalists into the early 20th century. So um, a football reporter might take a basket full of six pigeons perhaps to the match and every time a goal was scored you would write a few words on a bit of paper, again attach it to the pigeon, release the pigeon it would fly back to the newspaper office, hopefully, if it didn't get distracted or shot. And then the news would be taken from there and um, appear in the paper. Next we have the camera, which began to be used by uh, journalists from the mid-1800s. It wasn't until the late 19th century that printing technology caught up and allowed uh, photographs to be put in magazines and newspapers and then the telephone invented round about the 1870s which pretty quickly took over from the telegraph and then in the 1890s cinema moving pictures um, and in Lancashire one of the first to use this technology kind of journalistically were two men based in Blackburn, Mitchell and Kenyon uh, hence the name of the lecture theatre in Foster Building. And they would uh, film crowds at football matches or uh, coming out of work from the mill or holiday scenes on Blackpool Prom. Process the film, just a few minutes of it, and then a couple of hours later they'd be selling tickets outside a tent uh, to people who were in the film who could watch themselves on screen. And it was used in this way really before it was used for drama, uh, kind of like a, a local newspaper might print lots of names or nowadays lots of photographs so that the people in the paper will buy copies of it. And then we have radio, which began to be used for broadcasting and journalism uh, in America first and then in Britain from 1922 onwards. And then lightweight TV cameras which came in in the 1830s onwards which meant that um, camera operators and journalists could actually go to the scene of um, news 
and take pictures back and then up to date with the internet and social media and all these new technologies have had an impact on journalism and I know that a few of you are going to be including this in your essays about how technology has changed journalism and there's no denying that it has in terms of speed um, so that information can get to the audience much quicker and in terms of um, its power and how vivid and real it is um, whether that's um, the virtual reality or moving pictures or whatever but if we keep asking who is a journalist what is journalism then these technical inventions or adaptations seem less significant in their impact on journalism and also this version of journalism history has a very limited definition of technology as scientific or technical but if we broaden it out to techniques then i think we get much closer to what really influence changes in journalism your hand um, and of course written language is a technology it's something that invented by humans for a particular purpose or the invention of the interview as we've seen had a massive impact on journalism but it wasn't a technological innovation as we think of technology and then as Bob Nicholson the guest lecturer mentioned various changes making journalism much more popular in the 1880s and 1890s like having big headlines making um, journalism more attractive to a, a broader group uh, things like uh, live running commentary on sport uh, you could also argue it wasn't particularly a technical advance it was more uh, a technique and so if we also include techniques then uh, John Harlan becomes much more important this young reporter in his early 20s uh, he was working on a local paper in Hull and he he took existing types of shorthand but uh, came up with his own system which was much much faster and word got around of this amazing young reporter who could write as fast as people could talk and he was headhunted by one of the biggest papers uh, in the provinces at the time, the Manchester Guardian. So he came to Manchester in the 1830s, just as uh, a huge political movement was taking off, uh, calling for the vote for more people and more political rights. And this movement uh, featured lots of public meetings with, with people making demands on the government and so there was a great need for shorthand reporters so he was the right man at the right time uh, and Donald Reed the historian who written about him said that he Harlan soon became quite famous and his um, shorthand was perfect because these speeches were real sort of rabble-rousing eloquent speeches and only shorthand could capture every word and, and bring them alive as though the reader was actually in the uh, the meeting itself and a lot of the newspaper owners were supporters of this reform movement this political movement and so were very happy to employ reporters who could also uh, adopt Harlan's shorthand or very soon in the 1830s Isaac Pittman invented another faster shorthand method and the types of new shorthand spread very rapidly and we're, we're a significant part of this political movement so as shorthand spread and made journalism much more vivid it also made journalism um, of a higher status people started taking reporters more seriously because they now had a, a special skill a, a sort of a trick of the trade which ordinary people didn't have 
but shorthand, although it was a special technique, it wasn't something that was unique to reporting and journalism. Non-journalists also had it, so stenographers in court and secretaries. And equally, the other side of the argument, there were some very good journalists that didn't know how to use shorthand. And so shorthand in itself wasn't enough to establish reporting as a profession. And we've, we've looked before when we looked at training about is journalism a profession or not. So shorthand moved it a bit closer, but still wasn't enough. And just as an aside, um, what I've done here is I haven't just described some changes in technology and techniques. I've tried to answer that question, so what? What is the meaning of this? What's the significance? If we go back to those questions, who is a journalist? What is journalism? And that's what I want you to do in your essay, is to bring out the significance of what you found. Don't just describe it. So that is one type of journalism history, which foregrounds technology. And it's um, slightly critically called technological determinism because it believes that it's the technology, the inventions, the machines, sometimes the techniques that um, are controlling history, controlling changes in society, controlling people. And there's two famous thinkers associated with technological determinism, particularly to do with the media. One is Marshall McLuhan, whose thinking is very popular in, in Canada, where he's from, and America, less so in Europe, and an American Neil Postman. And um, at this point, I'd like you to pause this video and watch another video that is less than two minutes long. It's the um, official trailer for the 1931 original black and white Frankenstein film. Absolutely brilliant film, so do watch it. But just for now, watch the uh, two minute trailer because it's very relevant to this subject. Right, so you've watched the trailer, maybe you've even watched the film. I hope so. Why have I put that into a lecture about technology? Well, of course, you know that the book Frankenstein was written by Mary Shelley, an early feminist, at the turn of the 1800s, as industrialization was on the rise and there were a lot, a lot of anxiety about what these new machines would do to people and whether who was in control of the technology. Uh, was, it the, was it the creators of technology or was it the technology itself? And so this question, who's in control, Dr. Frankenstein or the monster he created, um, is at the basis of the book. Incidentally, the book was adapted into a stage play which got its world premiere in Preston. Now that stage play was used as the basis for the film that I've just asked you to look at the trailer of. There you go. And perhaps there is some evidence that um, top technology can influence things in Germany. So for example, in America, historians argue that uh, because every word on a telegram costs more money, an extra cent or so, journalists got into the habit of writing very short sentences, very pithy and to the point, and that this, this telegraphies, as it was called, influenced the, the journalistic writing style in newspapers and meant that uh, American style journalism became more objective and just fact based. Another idea might be that um, the rise of shorthand in the 1830s just as the parliamentary reform movement got going and all this reporting of these reform meetings helped to bring about the political change and spread the vote more widely. Um, something else that you would deny is that uh, television news bulletins tend to focus on stories for which you can get good pictures, good video, um, as much as for their news value. Equally, um, you might say that the rise of the internet has led football clubs and other 
sports organisations to be able to communicate directly to the fans uh, without going through established independent media like local newspapers, newspapers and uh, broadcasters. Is the coverage of the Tour de France, the third biggest uh, media event in the world, is it dictated by the technology that's available? So now we have motorbikes with cameramen on the back like this. We have uh, gyroscopic cameras um, giving fantastic aerial shots. And this is a diagram from cyclingtips.com just showing the uh, technical infrastructure involved in um, televising this very unusual sporting event. Is the, the nature of the coverage dictated by the technology? And then if we think about the, the modern journalist uh, and the technology available, phones, social media, uh, internet, laptops, there's a quote here from uh, the former sports editor of the Times, David Chappell, saying that before the mobile phone and the laptop, the journalist's job was much simpler. So he gives the example of covering a, a football match. Whereas nowadays, um, the journalists can never relax. They're always on. They're always supposed to be doing two or three things, like live tweeting, uh, putting a few calls in for quotes, um, typing up a story, doing some online research. So the job has got a lot harder and is that because of technology? My answer to those questions would be, well, it's complicated. So for example, this idea that the Telegraph changed journalists' language may be for America, but that didn't happen in Britain where the style of writing was and is different and where objectivity has always been less important as a journalistic value, particularly in newspapers. So that's uh, cultural differences rather than technology. And then um, we talk about oh these Facebook algorithms that, that leave us in our bubbles of people that we agree with. But those algorithms are written by people. Um, they're, they're not machines, really. They're machines that were designed by humans, and the algorithms can be changed all the time. And then uh, the other examples, um, the shorthand and the reform bill, there were all sorts of other political calculations by the government, uh, quite independently of the reporting of the meetings in the press, although that was part of it. Equally with um, TV news, news values are still part of the calculation, despite the need to illustrate them visually most of the time, but if the story is important enough it still appears on the TV uh, with very few pictures. Then we think of the um, football clubs bypassing independent media with their own websites, where you might say that perhaps that was um, because of decisions to give away um, news for free in Britain and the presence of the BBC in the UK online news market it has made it very difficult for anyone to charge for news and therefore that has affected that, that news market. And then you get to the Tour de France. Um, most people would say that the coverage of the Tour de France is decided by the peculiar nature of the, the event, that it, it doesn't happen in one place, it keeps moving uh, at an unpredictable speed. And so you need all that, te that technology to somehow capture this sort of moving feast of sport. And then uh, the multi-skilled journalist uh, doing three things at once. Now is that because of the technology or is it because of um, management that wants to get more value out of fewer human resources? Is it because of the union being weak at the time and then not being able to negotiate a better deal for journalists? Is it because of companies prioritising profit over um, working conditions of their journalists. A final counter-argument against technological de determinism would be the fact that the telephone was invented in the 1870s, the wireless came into use in Britain in 1922 as a broadcasting tool, but the football phone-in only arrived in Britain from America 
in uh, 1978, I think it was, uh, through Radio Clyde. And so, decades, almost a century after the technology was available, um, it was only then that people put the two things together and came up with a radio show. So in that example, the technology didn't determine the invention of the, the football radio phoning. Um, the technology was held back by perhaps social attitudes of the rather snobbish BBC who looked down on football fans, who, who, even though newspapers took them seriously, especially the local newspapers. Maybe it was social changes and um, the football fans movement of the 1970s and 80s perhaps that, that led to it. So, to conclude, new technologies do affect journalism, but often it's the smaller changes um, from society and politics and economics and working practices that have a bigger impact than the big shiny techie things. So, as I argued, perhaps John Harlan's shorthand had a bigger impact than the electric telegraph in what in changing the possibilities of journalism. So sometimes it's not about technology, it might be about power, it might be about capitalism, as uh, Erna Brink says in the uh, further reading that I recommended. Sometimes it's about the politics, so the telegraph was invented in the 1820s, but it only became widely used for newspapers in Britain for after 1870, when it was nationalised by the government, which was a political decision with economic consequences and sometimes it's to do with the stories that are popular at the time so during the Cold War kind of uh, the Eastern Communist bloc against the Western Capitalist bloc there was more foreign news in the newspapers when the Cold War ended in 1989 foreign news went down with the rise of um, Islamic terrorism and the war in Iraq then the amount of foreign news went up again. So nothing to do with technology, more to do with international politics. And then management policy. So again, another reason that people think that foreign news decreased in British newspapers in the 70s and 80s was because uh, Rupert Murdoch was taking papers like The Sun and the News of the World down market, which required more showbiz and less foreign news. So technology is part of the picture but it's human factors that have a, a bigger influence on journalism. And when you're writing your essay, you're going to get higher marks if you don't just stop at the easy answer of technology changing things, but go further and ask, well, just exactly how did it change journalism and the role of the journalist, and what else was involved besides technology? Um, so, yeah, a change in market and audience demands, for example, the requirement to keep up with social media and the way that people use their smartphones for news nowadays as another example. So technology in the mix but a lot of other factors besides. Thank you. And then the references as ever. And then after you've seen this lecture I'd like you to, to answer two quick questions on a technology survey, which is at this link here. I'll also put it below the video on Blackboard and below the video on YouTube. Okay, see you on Friday.